the, my, there we go. Yes, fixed. Right, my screen is busted, my mic is busted. But other than that, everything's working as normal. <laughs> Hang on, let me just. I don't know why he does this. This is so annoying. Every so often, and I've got no explanation for it, is my camera decides to go left. <laughs> it's like stop, stop it, stop it. Um, so I have to do that, um, and it's totally random. It's one of those things that sometimes happens, and it can be fine a moment before. And then it, it's busted again. <laughs> but anyway, never mind. Never mind. We're here. We're back. We're live. And I am. I am back from my my Easter break. Um, it's uh, there. We go. So fantastic. Yes. Yeah, so, so this is this is all normal behaviour for the stream. Uh, one of these days, I shall be just slick and professional, and uh, everything will work as you would expect it to do on a you know a top a top stream. But no, it's part of the charm. I feel something has to go <laughs> slightly wrong. Um, Every single time, but yeah, it's just it's just the nature of these things. Yeah, I think I don't know whether it's the camera. Just it seems there's a basically the camera is it's a razor um, something K K Kyo 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 something like that, and um, it's it's very good. I mean the quality's fine. It works quite nicely, and it's got a little ring that lights up, and you know it looks it looks quite swish. But it does have this. It seems to have this bug. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Where and I've just seen go with it to say no oh, time for the weekly waffle. <laughs> um, so it's and it's it's got a tilt and pan control. So it, it's obviously got some little servo inside it that can move the camera up and down left right, which is which is quite useful because you can't exactly always get the camera physically where you want it. And yet the tilt is fine. It doesn't ever change. Whereas the pan control, the left right control, seems to just occasionally go. No, I'm going to go all the way over there. But no obvious reason. And it, the annoying thing is, it can be right before the stream. I press the start stream button, and then when I go to that visualization, the camera's gone. Nah, I'm off over there. So I don't know. I, <laughs> every sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't, and I have no clue as to why. But there we go. Never mind. Anyway, um, lovely stuff. Anyway, lovely to see you. All. Thank you all much for for, for returning um, and and attempting to make this the number one. We probably already are already, but um, <laughs> number one Frontier First Encounters stream on the entire internet. We achieved that with Frontier Elite too fairly quickly. I haven't had the email yet. Maybe I haven't been streaming long enough. I haven't had the email yet from um, from Twitch to say congratulations. You are because so, that's 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 basically when you know you've arrived. Um, <laughs> But there we go. Anyway, anyway, it's lovely to see it's lovely to see all of you on the stream. So thank you very much. Keep chatting in the chat, and we'll get on with with some of the retro stuff. Um, and um, I, I, one person I saw, it's, I think he's scrolled off the top now. I can't see it, but uh, somebody who's caught me live streaming for the first time. So welcome to you, particularly. Um, you can hear me waffling in <laughs> in real time. You lucky person. <laughs> There's no way for you to fast forward through all the really boring bits without just sitting here chuckling and talking to myself but there we go never mind anyway it's lovely to see you all so i hope i hope um actually it's a really miserable wet horrible day here in the uk um so um, what better to do than play some some retro <laughs> some retro gaming um anyway so we um if you recall it's been it's been um i'll get a black polygon <laughs> that's right yes those very strange awards that we got um so yes alas i'm still playing here i'm still playing here with a hacked game that we used <laughs> In order to, to to beat the first mission, <laughs> so it's, this, it's a very very bad way to play the game. But we had to cheat. Um, I, I, you know, unless somebody else can tell me, there was, you know, even from a standing start, there was no way to complete the first mission, <laughs> or at least um, uh, no obvious way to complete the first mission without. Um, um, cheating. <laughs> so, so presumably somebody managed to do it because otherwise, how would you know it was there in the first place? But um, it was very, very tight. So the distance you had to travel in the ship that you had and the amount of money you could make in order to upgrade the ship in the time that you had seemed to be virtually, virtually impossible. Um, so we have cheated, <laughs> which it seems a shame actually because um, this game has 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 a story, which is actually the only. Yeah, actually, I think I'm right in saying really the only elite game that ever did have a story. Um, so, because obviously the original elite was just a, you know a rank progression and a um, a few embedded missions, depending on the version you played. Uh, Frontier Elite Two didn't have a story in it at all. Again, just a rank progression, more sophisticated options and things to do. And I suppose, <laughs> arguably. 
<laughs> slightly controversially. Um, Elite Dangerous does kind of has a story. Kind of has a story. Um, does it really have a story? Not like not like this game has a story at least. Let's let's qualify it like that. So, um, and this yeah, and this game actually a lot of the story that is inside Elite Dangerous, where it does exist, is based off the lore of this game. So this is this is historically significant, I think, from an Elite perspective. Even though I would argue that it's the worst of all of the Elite games in its actual execution, um, there are so many things wrong with it, um, which which are sadly spoil what could have been actually quite a fun Elite experience. But um, it, um, it sort of, as we discussed in the previous room, it builds on top of Frontier Elite 2, but ruins quite a lot of it as well, uh, which is which is a real shame because, yeah, you know, it, it, in some ways it's just Frontier Elite 2 with a story, which is good, but unfortunately lots of the other bits don't work well. Um, uh, would loading a legit Frontier save file to complete that mission count is not cheating? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got a variety of save games. Anyway, so at the moment we are just post, if you recall. I'm just going to try and find it. Where are the newspapers? So we are, um, uh, we we have we have caught ourselves being slightly dodge because um, we were moving a relic or a museum relic from one place to another, only to find surprise, surprise that actually it was stolen. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, you know, so we're now infamous. Look, here we are. Look, the thieves identified last night by the Imperial Guard, the Solly Hull. <laughs> Slightly tongue in cheek. And is, if you're not playing this in the UK, you won't get some of these references. I'm afraid because Solly Hull is a is a well back in the back in the 90s when this was it was a small town outside of Birmingham. Now I imagine it's been assumed by Birmingham. Um, but Solly Hull is a place, okay. And Trent Water is, a, or at least was, a a water company. <laughs> that provided water in the UK. Um, so there are quite a lot of silly in-game references here. Uh, but look, both museum's workers plus accomplice Commander Wega. <laughs> oh no, it's me. Um, I'm in the newspaper. So um, uh, we've succeeded in bypassing all the routine psychological profile, genetic testing and soul searching techniques. Um, anyway, so we're, we're the bad boys. So we're, yeah, what's quite nice here is we're bad. We're the, we're the bad guys. <laughs> which has stolen this museum artifact from the empire, uh, which is quite cool. Uh, in the federal times, um, so um, yeah, they take a slightly different spin on it, which is which is quite good. Anyway, this is a unique piece of unidimensional artwork. Now we, we had a little bit of a debate last week as to what a unidimensional artwork would actually be. Um, <laughs> um, and I'm not sure, not quite sure what that means. Um, the last surviving relic of an ancient and sentient race, interestingly enough. So it's not actually something created by humanity here. Wiped out by the colonizing forces of Deval in their efforts to carve themselves a space on the universal trading map. Uh, at Kana 60 died also that the Empire might live, and we're not about to let them forget it. So this actually is something that is still in the Elite Dangerous timeline, the fact that um, the Empire destroyed a sentient race on Akanar 60 when they effectively colonized it. Um, so, according to the Federation, the Akinar treasure, we don't call it the Duval artifact because it's, it's the Akinar treasure, uh, will be put on display. So as far as the federal feds, the feds are concerned, this is a good thing that's happened here. Um, and so that's that's that. Um, and then mentors are trained in the full history of Akinar, will be pleased to inform visitors of the full horror of the genocide, its precedence and the nature of the Imperial High Command that took its place. So, <laughs> so Empire bad, Federation good, okay? <laughs> um, and um, so, you know, so that's <laughs> Imperial aid eaten by own Ling Lang. <laughs> I'm not sure what that's all about. Uh, <laughs> so there are some funny articles in there. So anyway, so, you know, as far as the Empire is concerned, we've, we've, we've slightly burnt our bridges with the Empire already. Um, and, and, you know, they, they paint us, yeah, they, that's quite right, Kevin, they, they, they paint us as this master thief, when actually all we did, we just camped out on the, <laughs> on the spaceport for a month. Not at all suspiciously, waiting for this thing to be loaded into the cargo bay. But anyway, um, a random intergalactic gossip never usually tells us a great deal. Uh, Frontier News, so, um, and that's not talking about it either. Um, and Universal Scientists are, you know, starts giving you some background on the Thargoids around this point. Okay, so we've got a little bit of time now, actually, um, to um, go off and do some more stuff in the game before the next mission turns up. Um, so um, let's 
<laughs> let's have a look at what's going on because it'd be quite nice to um, um, quite nice to go and, and, and have a look about now we ended up in the beta hydro system which I can just about make that on the screen that's really hard to read isn't it because there's another planet on top um, so I do want to show you a couple of things a bit wacky in this version so let's go to Sol because um, I want to show you something there um, and oh, 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 I think Space T has arrived. Mm. Excellent! Here comes the Space T. You've got me across, big across, big across, big across. Yeah, yeah, it goes. Oh. <laughs> That's it. There you go. <laughs> Space T has arrived. Thank you very much, love. <laughs> mm. Space T is good. Space T is what we need. Right. So let's let's go to Alpha Centauri first because we can't get direct to Sol. I don't think, or can we? No, it's out range. Uh, right. So I've got to remember how to play this. Um, and um, yeah, the sound is on. It's not making any sound. Right, uh, launch request. Boom. And uh, <laughs> I forgot what the user interface does. Oh, it's the engines, isn't it? Hang on, there we go. Right. Ooh, weird graphic effects. Right, so let's. Oh, we've got to fly with the mouse now. That's confusing as well. There we go. Right. Space T, sadly not. not yeah, no. Yes, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> While I'm just flying around, Odyssey, I, I must admit, I've been enjoying the Alpha a bit more than I thought I probably would. And I'm not really into space pew pew on legs anyway, but I did give it a whirl. It was all right. It was all right. But um, you can't buy a drink at the bar. <laughs> Come on. That's that's, got, that's obviously got to be there. So they need to fix that. Um, um, and sp or space T. Where's, where's, where's the space T? Space T is important. Uh, right, undercarriage up. I like that sound. That sounds quite good. I should use an invisible space to yes. This is my sort of constellation mug, as you can, as you can sort of see. It's sort of it's got a space theme. Um, right, these are right away. This bit I always did like. Okay, actually, in this game. So as as we're flying away, let's just let's just. I know we can hyperspace directly, but. There's our, there's our ship, okay, and it's flying away from the ground, and the ground's all procedurally generated, which looks a bit messy, but it's it's quite clever. The Phantom Mug, yes, I do have the Phantom Mug. But what I d always did like about this game, when I did play it, was that you can see the horizon, you can see the atmosphere slowly um, fading, and as we fly up into space, let's go back to the front screen, because um, it shouldn't take us too long in this ship. Um, Let's just watch it from the outside. There we go. You can sort of see the atmosphere um, sort of slowly fading away. And um, here we are at 56,000 feet up. And I like the fact that the atmosphere would slowly fade to, well, in, in our case, dark blue, because that's the colour we've selected, as you emerge from the atmosphere. So I'm doing this in real time at the moment. You, I should use my shade mug, so I should, shouldn't I? Yes, I should get those out again. We must be causing an atrocious sonic boom down on the surface as we take off at these speeds, but that's not something that's ever bothered <laughs> these things. Um, but yeah, the, you know, the sky slowly, again, what I like here is the sky slowly fades to, um, fades fades away as we come, this is quite a thick atmosphere actually. Um, the atmosphere slowly fades away as we come out of the atmosphere. It's just a nice effect. It's just a nice effect. There it goes. It's beginning to fizzle out as we leave the atmosphere. And then the, other than you need atmospheric shielding to get into the atmosphere, there's not much kind of gameplay involved in the atmosphere. But there is this fade to space bit. There you go. And then, then the stars come out at a certain point, now, which I think is actually really rather nice. Um, so, you know, so now we're, we're out of the atmosphere and um you know we start getting space dandruff whatever that stuff is and it's just it's just a nice effect it's done well it's done well it, it kind of does give the sense of you leaving a planet and because you can leave at sort of sunset and sunrise and all those sort of things you get you do get a nice atmosphere and the star dreamer allowed you to fast forward time to sunset or sunrise so you could always take off into the sunset and stuff like that it was it was quite nice you know that sort of stuff is is quite nice Stuff to play with. I quite enjoyed that. But anyway, right, let's get the hyperspace on the way. I don't know what that hyperspace is. <laughs> very, very messy. Um, and you seem to come out of hyperspace sideways. I don't know what all that's about. Because if I turn the engines off, look, there we go. We just. It's like the the, vol the velocity vector of our ship gets a bit confused when it comes out of hyperspace. And we're <laughs> drifting side downwards. Well, relative to the ship, of course. Um, 
here, which which is I don't know, it just strikes me as a bit odd. Why would you come out of hyperspace sideways? <laughs> Um, I, w I did wonder actually looking at that hyperspace animation yeah it's probably just random yeah whether or not there was a bit of gameplay involved in that whether you were supposed to fly down that tube and orientate yourself but um, I don't know um, so um, I'm assuming that thing on the scanner is the yeah it's the hyperspace exit point so we you know that's that's where we come but we've come out of it at sort of right angles haven't we which is a bit weird but anyway now there's something you need to know about soul okay uh, so let's go over there while we're waiting for more missions and stuff to happen. So we're going to hyperspace. But it's, it's, it's so fast you can't really see it. Um, FD should have played a joke for iPhone, but that hyperspace that would have been funny, wouldn't it? <laughs> Actually, I saw the new hyperspace animation. It looks really nice. Um, so that that's quite a nice thing. Um, yeah, there's no. There's, there's, I mean, it's quite nice that they upgrade things like that. But it'd be kind of quite nice if they explained why. Well, that it's just a visual upgrade because it looks very, very different to the one we had before. Um, and stuff like that in my kind of head cannon kind of needs an explanation. Well, the, the frame shift drive has been improved by tweaking the tantalum bypass valve or something. I don't know. <laughs> something anyway. Um, right, uh, we're in Seoul. So now th th here's something that you need to check out. Okay, so let's go to let's go to Mars first. Okay, let's go to Mars, uh, which is over there. Uh, Mars. There we go. Should be a safe system. So, okay, off we go to Mars. Right, we're going to go to Mars first. Now, Mars, as you know, in the timeline at this point, has been terraformed, so it's like an Earth like world now. Okay. Um, so, um, so, you know, as you approach it, you'll be, um, you know, you'll see a sort of well, that's that world. <laughs> there you go. Um, apart from this ridiculous reticule, which you can't switch off or do anything with, so which does sort of spoil the graphics a little bit because you can't kind of see past it. But if I orientate the ship a little bit off course, um, and then we, there we go, and then we zoom past it, you'll get you'll get the. Oh, we've come to a halt. That's. Well, no. 30, 30, 30 kilometers per second seems to be quite a good speed in in frontier. Let's just do that. There we go, because we can sort of manage it. So okay, so here here is Mars. Okay, so this has been terraformed. Now this is using the frontier first encounters kind of procedural landscape generation stuff, which is quite nice. Okay, so it's it's quite effective. You know, it jumps in. There you go. You can just see it now increasing the resolution a bit. So you know, there's Mars. Obviously, it doesn't look anything like Mars today because it's been terraformed. But there is a, you know, there's a, there's an ice cap which is quite nice. There's some seas. There's no recognisable Martian features. You know, that would be a bit much. But you know, it's it, it looks like it's been terraformed, which which is good. Okay. Um, so you know, there's high land and there's low land and there's an ice cap and there's an island here and you know, okay, you know, for 1995, I think that's not so bad. Um, now, but let's go to Earth. OK, now we've got to go to Earth. <laughs> um, and witness the amazing, the amazing Earth graphics. OK, <laughs> here we go. Uh, oh, come on. No, nope, that button. Not very obvious. Bad UI. All right, so Earth is over there. Two astronomical units away. Let's go to Earth. OK, brace yourself. For the amazingness, all right. <laughs> okay, this is the Earth, and you might be thinking, "Hang on a minute, he's gone to the wrong place. He's gone to Venus." Um, but I haven't. I haven't gone to Venus. This is the Earth, okay, because it says so in the HUD, as you can see. So, what's happened? You may ask. What's what's going on here? Well. <laughs> Um, there's there's two there's the, there's the law reason, okay. There's the law reason why the Earth looks like this, and there's the actual reason the Earth looks like this, okay. So you may be thinking now it's not the Earth. Well, it, it is the Earth, okay. It definitely is the Earth because, um, we you know it, it's well there it is. <laughs> it says the Earth on the screen, okay. So this is this is the Earth, and if I if I we'll we'll pause time now. Um, if I go to this mode 
and get rid of this really annoying UI. There we are. You notice there's 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 a problem, but on the surface of the earth, well at least there were, maybe they've all gone. No, there, there we go. The cities, the cities are still there, okay? So there's New York. Uh, there's Tokyo, London, there's New Moscow. London should be over there. Uh, oh, there we are, London. So there we go, London. Okay, London, London still exists. London and Paris still exist, which they did in the previous game. Okay, but you may be thinking, hang on a minute, what's up? <laughs> it's no texture. Okay, well, um, basically the law explanation here, and it's actually written in the manual somewhere, is that Earth has become really, really, really badly polluted, okay, between the year 3200 and 3250, <laughs> for some reason, um, and it's smog in the atmosphere. <laughs> Oh, I don't believe it either. Um, so, um, but um, that's actually in the law, okay? So, no, the, the, in the law of this game is is the fact that Earth has become very, very badly polluted in the last 50 years, and you can't see the surface anymore. <laughs> the real reason is because they couldn't get, or well, presumably David Braben couldn't get the procedural code that he was using for the planet services to render a realistic Earth. He couldn't effectively bend the coastlines enough um, in order to get it to make a realistic representation of Earth. Unlike Frontier Elite 2, which obviously used sort of simple vectors to sort of outline some of the key continents, um, for whatever reason, they couldn't do it in this version of the game. <laughs> so Earth has become a ball of smog. <laughs> in 3200 now we can we can still land on the surface I, I haven't tried that actually I think we should go down and check it out actually um, let's let's go to London because London is um, where is it in New York why can't I see London there's Paris Paris London oh, upside down right let's go let's go and land at London let's see what the state of the planet is um, let's hope it gets this right boom there we go so anyway so this is this is the surface of the earth is a right mess okay so the planet is is horribly polluted in the year 3250 whereas it wasn't in the year 3200 so there's obviously been some secondary, other than, other than the Third World War, of course, which happened now a long time ago in the Elite Dangerous time. Um, there is, um, there's obviously been a secondary problem <laughs> in the sense that, so you can see the landscape below us is procedurally generated, as you might expect, but it's, <laughs> the sky is, is uh, well, actually, that's probably not all that unusual for London, to be fair, but... Um, yeah it's 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 not very nice so what happened to the earth we just don't know really it's it's just everything became very polluted and bad <laughs> and then miraculously 30 to um 50 years later for the time for elite dangerous everything was fine again <laughs> so, so it's a short-term problem that um that we dealt with really really quickly um but also generated really really quickly so so 3200 clean 3250 smog ball 3300 clean again incredible I mean, it's amazing technology isn't it <laughs> That's that's that you know in my head that's not a very good use of law really. <laughs> it's like we we well, can't fix this programming problem. Um, I think it would have looked better if they'd just left it like Mars. I mean, um, rather than turning it into a ball of smog. Um, you know, yeah, yes, the, the continents maybe wouldn't have been right, but um, maybe you could get away with that just by saying the, the you know the ocean level had changed or something, which has happened in Elite Dangerous, obviously enough. Um, the contents aren't exactly the same. I think they should have just left it as it was. It looks better as a sort of, you know, an Earth-like world than this, this strange smoggy ball, which looks more like Venus. Um, so I don't know if it says anything in the game about it. I've got a feeling it's in the manual. Um, let's just let's just see. Does it? Um, you just no. It doesn't say it there. So world with indigenous life, and oxygen, atmosphere. It doesn't say anything that's you know, particularly badly wrong about it there. But anyway. <laughs> So that's that's the explanation. It's a bit weird. Um, um, so Earth Earth has been screwed up for, for some strange reason, but there we go. Um, right. So have we? Is anything else going on um, news-wise? I don't think yet there will be. 
So it's going to take a few more issues. So we need to kind of occupy ourselves for a little bit while then, because there's a, there's a gap. Um, and I don't know, playing this game originally, presumably at this point in the game, you would be building up your cash to get a better ship and you know all the usual things. Now we kind of bypassed that because we're cheating. <laughs> but um, I happen to know the next mission doesn't really come on stream until about August of this year. So um, we, um, we will, um, We'll have a play around. We'll just have a look around since we're at London. Let's have a look and see what ships are ships are available and stuff like that. So, um, oh, the Skeet Cruiser. <laughs> okay, now this is possibly one of the most reviled ships in Frontier First Encounters uh, because it's it's got that really really stupid thing on top. Now, is it stuff like this? <laughs> it's like a pneumatic ship. Pump it up, pump it up, pump it up. Okay, so it's it's like an accordion ship. Now um, maybe we should just maybe we should just buy one for lol. But um, you know, given that they, uh, this is the bit I never understand about elite and anything. Because on one hand, okay, um, you know, all of the elites have uh, have you know have oddities in them. Okay, like this, but. Um, on one hand, David Braben is absolutely fixated on scientific accuracy. You know, the stars have to be right and the planets have to orbit and, you know, all that sort of stuff. And, and yet he signed that off or maybe he even designed it. I don't know. So, what? What was the thinking process here? <laughs> it just, just makes no sense that I can think of. I can't think of any reason for even in a sci-fi universe why you'd have a spaceship with an oscillating thing. I mean, what possible benefit does it? Have? <laughs> I just feel like I should be doing this. <laughs> it's just. Uh, is is it just one of those graphical things because we can do it? And it's like yeah, we're showing anim maybe maybe having animated moving things, but we had that nicely with Frontier Elite Two. Okay, the spinning nacelles they, they were they were kind of pointless, but they looked good. You know, spinning nacelles were have a had a sort of Star Trek vibe, didn't they? Um, but that is just <laughs> really really stupid. Um, there is a Wyvern Explorer. What does that look like? Okay, so. It's another very odd looking ship. Okay, so that's a, it is, it's sort of ship like in the sense it's pointed, but it's got, it's got a thing sticking out the back. It looks like an antenna. And I, yeah, that's, is that rotating? It's not rotating at the moment, but maybe it would rotate. Um, yeah, so there's some very, very odd ships in, in this game. Very, very odd ships indeed. Um, all of which have disappeared. <laughs> None of them have ever come back. Um, so the ski cruisers won. Lion Transport, I think, was in the previous game. There aren't that many other ships. There's, there's the Adder, the good old Adder. Um, the Puma Clipper is a big one. Again, with these monstrous sort of undercarriage things. Um, and you know, the, <laughs> the Lifter. <laughs> it's, it's a really funny little ship. Um, and um, <laughs> you can actually see the cargo racks. Which which is quite good, um, so so there are, there are just some very very strange ship designs in in this sort of thing. interplanetary shuttle again you know does does interplanetary shuttle type stuff doesn't have a hyperdrive um, yeah I think <laughs> I think we should have all the ridiculous ships because I mean that that is just odd isn't it um, I don't even remember that one the Wyvern Explorer um, so you know so that's that that is that is peculiar quite what that's all about. Um, and you know, we've currently got this 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 current version. Anyway, so let's um um I'm just trying to remember what spec on our ship is. Where are we? There we go. Okay, so this thing's got most of the stuff on board that we need to do. Are there any interesting missions hanging around here at the moment? Probably not, but let's have a quick quick look. Alien artifacts will pay oh that's quite nice. What do we get alien artifacts from? Um take small packages. Passage on a fast ship. Goods bought and sold and position on a reputable starship. <laughs> Save our species, stop the carnage on a newly settled world. So that's, <laughs> what does that actually say? Oh, it's just a donation, please. It's just, a, just yeah, so it's just a, a bit of fluff, that one. Um, 
Oh, what happened to the videos? Oh, have I switched them off? Darn. <laughs> Sorry, yes. I may have done others. Did I switch the videos off? Let's put the, <laughs> just put the videos back on. Because um, they were. Cheesy, are they not working? Welcome oh. to your friendly local federal relay. <laughs> They're back. <laughs> um, okay, so. Welcome to the Federation shipyards. Come on in, don't be shy. <laughs> no, that's, it's really good that your current ship is. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah. Have you not seen these amazing bits of full motion video before? So this worries me a little bit about ED actually in the in the alpha with all the people talking because it's <laughs> it kind of just reminds me of this and it's really really bad. It's really really bad at times. Welcome to the fastest shipyard in the system. <laughs> you could just sort of say, you want me to do what? I just read the script, okay? <laughs> Uh, it, I mean, it's, I suppose it's an attempt. I mean, you have to see this in its place, don't you? In 1995, where you know, oh, we can put video into computer games. What a cool idea. Um, along with spinny things and, and oscillating stuff to show that our spaceships are in it. But, you know, so I suppose it was, a, in some ways, <laughs> a little bit. If they don't have some of these voice lines, and obviously I'll be disappointed. <laughs> they are really, really atrocious. Um, uh, but there are, you know, there are a few other bits of kit on here. Navigation can be done. I'm going to fit one of those. Can I fit one? Oh, I've already got one. Combat computer. I don't know what the combat computer does. Let's add that. <laughs> Missile view. That that sounds fun. Let's have one of those as well. Um, where's the... How do I switch to the other display? There's a way of doing it, which I've forgotten. Maybe I can't do it on the ground. Where's the missile display? It's not there. Um... Not that either. Oh, it's that one. There we go. So I haven't got any missiles. Let's go buy some missiles because <laughs> buying missiles is fun. <laughs> um, upgrades. Let's let's get. Oh, sorry. Good. We'd hope you'd call in. We have a load more ships on offer. Take a look around. <laughs> so we've got naval missiles, and I don't know what. Yeah, this is an MV1 assault missile. I don't know what. They, that, presumably that's best. So let's get a whole stack load of. Oh, I don't have. An, I don't have enough spare space in my ship. Oh, so I've run out of cargo space. Okay, have I got something in the cargo? Or is the ship just, it's not a very big ship. Okay, so it's full of shield generators, it would seem. <laughs> no cargo space. Um, cargo space tw 12. Oh, I don't know, never mind. Um, so there we go, it's a bit weird. It's, <laughs> this UI is, this UI is, oh, you see, oh, they're nukes, okay. Oh yeah, the missile view allows you to see what the missile is, is doing, but I apparently don't have any space on my ship. I've got, I've got cargo space 12, but it's probably because it's all hacked and, and, and mucked up. Um, now, our military drive, we do need fuel for it, so I think I need to buy some. Welcome, Commander. We're a bit short on military fuel at the moment. You may have to pay over the odds for it, Ooh. if that's what you're after. Under that's context sensitive. That was that was quite good. Um, I've, got, I've got 10 tonnes of military fuel, and presumably I've got... Uh, I haven't got any radioactives. Oh, I can't get rid of radioactives here, so because it's because we're in the because um, we're in the um, empire. So I'm, actually, have I picked up a fine as a result? Um, let's have a check the police. Yeah, we don't call it a crime. Yes, okay. So I've got <laughs> I've got to pay the fine. There we go. Um, yeah, I've got to be careful of that. I keep forgetting that you're not allowed to fly into federal space with a military drive um, unless you dump all of your radioactives outside. Quickly. So, anyways, let's 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 toot on down to the Empire then, because it's a bit safer down there. Um, for, for for actually, it's not. Uh, <laughs> we're okay in federal space because um, you know the Empire doesn't like us actually because we were being a bit dodgy. So let's let's jump about a bit. Let's go back down there, right? Because we need to do some jumping about to get the time to pass, so we can get some um, some funky new missions. Uh, right. So uh, take off on the carriage up. get some acceleration. Let's speed forward time and we can see the amazing fog like, it's very 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 thick fog as you can see you can't see any distance at all uh, but it's not very thick fog as you can see it 
well, we get out of the atmosphere. So the the Earth is it has has become a bit of a state for for reasons which aren't entirely clear. Um, right, so that's beta hydra is out of range. Why is it out of range? Oh, yeah. Okay, let's go to delta bonus then. There we go. And <laughs> zoom. Empire wants your head now for stealing. Yes, that's right. <laughs> stealing the shameful piece of history. Yeah, there, there is that problem as well. So let's um, let's switch the engines off for a moment and let's get rid of the uh, stuff that's in the hold, which uh, is there. We are radioactive. <laughs> okay, and then we can then we can jump <laughs> uh, a bit further. Right, yeah, we want to get down to. Let's hang around in Akon. Let's see what other ships are available down there. And zoom. Okay, that will give us a little bit more radioactive. But that's not a problem because we're almost in range. In fact, we are in range. There we are, Akon. So it's now May. Okay, so we still need to do some jumping about. Uh, let's go to Akon and just check out what sort of ships are available here. I can ask six something, isn't it? I wonder if they'll do anything as a result of <laughs> whether there's any context sensitivity. So you know, so actually, so Capitol is is a terraformed world, but and uh, well, actually, no, is it? No, it's not a terraformed world, is it? Um, it is a naturally habitable world, I think. Let's go to the space station rather than planet there. Ah, so there's a new issue of Universal Scientist, so we'll review that when we get to the base. Um, see what's going on in the newspapers. 52 AU, there we go. Earth's in the Empire. No, 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 so it's not, uh, no, not in the Empire. So no, the Federation and the Empire um, exist pretty much as they do in Elite Dangerous by this point. And the Alliance exists as well, it's where we started the game. So Empire, Imperial Systems are down there. Um, there's the Core Systems, as they were called then. We call it we don't really call it the core systems anymore. Um, and then up here is the is, is the world of the Alliance. So um, in in Frontier First Encounters and Frontier Elite 2, there is a sort of 3D universe, as you can see there. But it doesn't really go up and down very far, okay? It's a sort of flat plane with things a bit above and a bit below. I don't think there's a... Oh, we just arrived. Um, are there... <laughs> Or these really stupid spinning space stations. Um, by Akinar, says GD, yes indeed. <laughs> so um, so here we are at Akinar, and they're letting us in, which is nice. Um, again, another very, very complicated space station. Okay, so not only is it rotating around its center axis, all of the army things at the top are rotating in such a manner that they must have it. <laughs> it's a bit like the gearbox on the Chinook helicopter, um, in the sense that. The <laughs> <laughs> the two blades on the Chinook are sequenced by a gearbox so that they don't hit each other. I mean, these things look extremely dangerous if one of them is slightly out of time. <laughs> it's very odd space. It's overcomplicated, overthought space station design. It's like, why is it like that? Um, and there are a lot of strange bases um, in, um, in Front of Elite 2. A few new adverts, which is quite nice to see. Um, so we should be able to hear... Oh. Welcome, Commander. The Empire values your service. Excellent. I feel at home now. <laughs> um, so, stock market. Greetings, Commander. Is there anything we can help you with? So, <laughs> the funny thing is, of course, law-wise, um, actually, we can look. We can now buy some missiles. Let's get let's get some missiles because we've got space on the ship. Um, actually, let's get rid of the. Uh, let's get where, where is the there should be some what's happened to the uh, yeah the radioactives are there why can't I get rid of them here because we're in the empire we should be able to sell them Hi. have you got much to sell nothing's moving very fast right now oh dear <laughs> um, I can buy normally there's an option to sell or buy at, maybe it's illegal here. I don't know, is it? Is it illegal here? I didn't get a warning about it. Shipyard, contact police. Oh no, it's fine. Okay, they don't allow it here. Oops. <laughs> oh dear. 
Oops. I'm running out of cash, actually. I've got to be a bit careful. Um, not very good play, play style. I, yeah, that's actually... These military drives are a real pain, actually, to be honest. They are a bit of a nuisance. Um, <laughs> uh, so, yes, I'm going to have to make some money, actually, thinking about it. Because, look, I'm, I'm running out of cash. Um, so... Um, what should we what should we do? Because um, we've got a good ship, we can we can do we can do cool stuff. Uh, but the problem is we don't really want to be doing it here because I didn't realise radioactives were illegal in Akana as well. Um, let's 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 just have a look at what ships are here just because we can. Um, well, and, yeah. <laughs> okay, so in 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 Imperial space we have. Um, Viper long range fighter, nothing particularly. So the Imperial Trader is is quite a nice ship. We've seen that before. That's from Frontier Elite Two. That's the sort of three nacelled version of the Imperial um, Courier. The Imperial Courier is here as well, um, which we we know and love. Awesome ship. Uh, the Imperial Explorer is a slightly new one. So this one uh, is <laughs> again an odd ship. Okay. Um, yeah, some, somebody asked me to switch it back on <laughs> the videos, I'm afraid. Um, so this one, this is the one that was actually in the intro sequence and got blown up. You can see it has got spinny nacelles. cells. There's thumbs up for the spinny nacelles. cells. Um, but it's got this sort of really odd front. It's like two, sh it's, I mean, look at the paint job. It's like, um, so what you're looking for, sir, is, um, is, is a glossy back end to your ship, but just primer on the front. Is that, are you sure that's what you're, yep, that's the look I'm going for. Primer on the front, <laughs> gloss paint on the back. Um, <laughs> it's like, and um, so yeah, so another really, really odd ship design um, with, and one thing that really annoys me is that this, <laughs> The two antenna things that are sticking out the front aren't straight. They're pointing at an angle. It's like, no, oh, that's just horrible. So I, d I don't know what it is. It's like, it's like an Imperial platypus. That's exactly what it is. Um, it's like a Star Trek ship with the saucer section melted. Yeah, so it is a bit Star Trek-y, isn't it? Um, but it's sort of, <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. That's just, that's just really, really weird. Drive fitted class eight hyperdrive, but it's only got, it doesn't tell you, it's, you know, here's another thing, you know, you can't tell how much range it has because it goes off the edge of the screen. Um, so yeah, there are some, there's some very funny things. Let's just have a look at those. Um, yeah, I might need Welcome some money. Welcome to the Imperial Shipyard. All our ships are in good working order. <laughs> he looked like him. he was about six. <laughs> he's, he's the, I'm the apprentice at the Imperial Shipyard. Ah <laughs> uh, dear, quite funny. Can I Ooh. help you? <laughs> that's, 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 uh, that's quite intimidating. Um, right, so let's let's actually. I don't think I need a missile view. That was a silly thing to buy. Let's get rid of that. Um, uh, where are those? I don't. I don't really need all of those shield generators, do I? That, there, there's some money I can make back. Let's get rid of. At least ten of them. That gives us a bit of cargo space as well, which is good. Um, so, and then we can buy some missiles because why wouldn't we want to buy some missiles? Let's let's buy some MV2 assault missiles. One, two, three, four, five. I've only got space for two. Okay, well that's all right. So, um, um, we've got fuel on board. We don't need actually all that much military fuel, but. Um, from Akanar, what, what do we do here at Akanar? It is, uh, I need to get the major import export things. Oh, that's so annoying this user interface. Get out of the way of the console. <laughs> I can see what's going on. All right, major exports are liquor and luxury goods. It was luxury goods, that's what it was. Um, let's go back to the stock market. Hi, got Hi. <laughs> the funny thing is from a law perspective, okay, so according to the law, People in the empire have a snooty accent, so they should they should sound well, probably a bit like me, <laughs> a bit British, okay. Um, and the federation should be much more American, okay, because it is based on the USA, okay. Um, so you'd expect the the uh, the empire to be quite British, and the, um, <laughs> the federation to be very uh, American, but it, <laughs> the accents change depending on obviously who the actor was, uh, which is quite funny. Um, so let's, where are the luxuries? Let's make a little bit of cash while waiting for some more missions to, 
do their thing. There we go, we've got 15 tons of luxury goods on board. Oh, I can't afford any more. That's annoying. Let's sell a few more of those shield gens because. Welcome. Yep, it's the new apprentice again. Good afternoon, Pearl Shipyards. Our servants are yours. Everything is fully guaranteed. <laughs> Not quite sure where that accent was from. <laughs> ah, dear, repairs. No, I want upgrades. Let's take let's take off half of those because it doesn't. We, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. How many have we got on there now? We should have. I know we've hacked this game, which is a bit dodged, but we've got 20 shield generator. That should be enough. Um, that gives us a bit of money to buy lots of luxury goods. I can't afford any more. Okay, so let's let's go with that. Um, I'll save the game at this point because <laughs> we know what this game is like. Um, dun, 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 and I think it was was it for Casey? Do they like luxury goods? find out major imports no it wasn't there oh no major imports luxury goods perfect okay so let's go there so I'm just gonna do some stuff in the game let's just see what see happens um, doesn't the British tutorial guy need he mentioned he sounds a bit yeah so that that's um, um <laughs> that's what they're supposed to sound like okay um, <laughs> <laughs> Shark Nido, yeah. Um, I heard a long time ago they were frontier. Were they frontier employees back in the day? You know, getting their getting their moment of fame in in the game forever. So, um, alas, rather reviled moment of fame. But it's all part of the experience. I think that's what you're saying. Um, so maybe the game favours the empire because the empire is supposed to be sort of British. Um, in fact, back in the day when I was writing Elite Reclamation or preparing to write Elite Reclamation, I did have a conversation with David Braben, and he tell he told me the empire is basically the British Empire in space. Okay, <laughs> that's basically what it is, with a bit of sort of Roman Republic sort of stuff structurally. He said, but it's kind of British Empire in space is is, is the best way of thinking about it, and and the Feds are basically the US in space. And the alliance, he said, is kind of like the European Union in space. So that kind of gives you a flavour of, of of how he felt it was sort of structured. So um, whether he deliberately um, created, because I mean, the, this whole Federation Alliance Empire thing is very much David Braben's law thing. It's, you know, he created this. It was the, to kind of pretty much to differentiate it from the original elite, which of course had a totally different pl political structure. And um, I wonder if he did deliberately kind of go, right, you know, US in space, Britain in space, European Union in space. I don't know whether he went much, you know, that's basically um, how he structured it. I don't know why he did it that way. Um, but, you yeah, know, that's what he did. Um, right, so let's let's get out of here. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, undercarriage down. Very bad. All right, so we may get attacked here. But let's hope that our ship is good enough um, that it doesn't matter still uh, let's go to a space station Patrick Depot around planet New America New America there we go in Empire space <laughs> don't know don't know why that would be um, there's New America and in we zoom so yeah maybe maybe it was just the politics of the day I, I don't really know I've just put the undercarriage up um, right, will we get attacked? We might. Or might not. We'll have to wait and see. Have we ever had our landing hit by... I don't think so. Um, I don't recall the game ever doing anything particular. Maybe maybe you pick up some damage or something. Does anybody know? I mean, there's that strange sound again. Occasionally you get a... <clears throat> as if you've bumped something. <laughs> And there's the old uh, Blue Danube, of course. So there's the same space station. This one's, I suppose, a little bit more sensible in the sense that um, it hasn't got bits that can hit each other if the gearbox goes wrong. <laughs> anyway, um, hopefully here we can... Not you again. <laughs> Look, we're still dealing with the lawsuits from the last time you came. Just refuel and leave, will you? <laughs> this guy really doesn't like us. He's, this, is, this is the game actually being slightly abusive. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, <laughs> just like, really? Come in, Commander. 
There's a run on computers at the moment. Is there? Prices are sky high. Should be a scoop if you have any with you. No, I haven't. Um, I wonder if those are... See, the computer price isn't sky high, so I'm just wondering if it's just one of those <laughs> bits of flavour. Um, the computer price there is actually quite low uh, compared to most of it. Let's just check the bulletin board in case anybody wants some luxury goods. Welcome to the Imperial High Command. All services are monitored to ensure legitimacy. Oh, okay, that's slightly slight overtones there. Um, the assassination missions are paying a bit better though, look. 22,000, so that's that's quite good. Um, does anybody want luxury goods though? No, not to worry. We shall sell them on the stock market because we can. There we go, that made a little bit of money. And can we get rid of the radar? Yes, we can. There we go. Let's get rid of those. So that's enough military fuel to be flying around with. Um, now, um, bulletin boards. So, welcome to the Imperial Link. Feel free to choose any service. <laughs> He's very stern. Um, someone for a removable job. Senator Dickens needs removing from the Zeon system. Um, no, quite. Well, we haven't got. Uh, we want someone with a higher elite federation ranking to do it. Okay, so that's just that's just. Welcome normal. to the Imperial Station yeah, Link. You've, you've told us that, but fella. Um, so we don't we don't have that again. I'd have to hack the game to give us some of those things, uh, which we don't have at this point. So at the moment we've still got no apart from <laughs> smuggling illegal goods. <laughs> uh, we haven't got any rank here, um, and it's now June. Okay, so I think um, I think the way these newspapers work is that. And we've got a new issue, so we should, we should go and check those out. And when we run out of issues, we have to buy some more. So we've still got six issues remaining. Okay, so um, so this is, again, this is flavor text that's happening while we're flying around in space doing our stuff. So Emperor Decrees, day of morning. Um, so the thing is here, you have to read through these newspapers because sometimes there is a clue and sometimes there isn't. Sometimes it's just flavor text and sometimes it is actually mission stuff. Uh, so this one is... Um, there's some stuff going on here, but um, it's not really connected to us. So uh, somebody, there's an Imperial Day of Mourning, sudden demise of trust and esteemed advisor Prince Aristide de la Vigny, uh, I retired, um, met with a mysterious accident at his home. Uh, <laughs> Speculation is rife that federal agents were responsible for subverting members of his staff who subsequently engineered his death. Okay, uh, so basically the Empire is blaming the Federation for the death of some dude. What does the Federation make of it? Because <laughs> I bet you there's a different take. Um, there we go. So who is the assassin? Uh, news broke recently of an assassin attempt made last week on the life of Hengist Duval. Okay, though if it seemed to have been made to hush up the circumstances around this incident, information leaked out through inner core news agencies suggest the assassins were members of Prince de la Vagny's family, incensed by his recent death at the hands, or should we say, the teeth of a rogue Ling Lang. <laughs> Readers remember the Empire's laughable insinuations that federal operatives instigated this unfortunate occurrence, but events have begun to unfold which reveal a darker side. Mm -hmm. Intrigue. Um, it's now confirmed that both the Prince's sons, Paul and Thibault, are being held for trial, charged with high treason and attempted regicide. Um, earlier reports of the rupture between the Empire and de la Vagny, uh, previously one of the closest Imperial advisors, subsequently a forced retirement of the latter, are now being re-examined. Diplomatic mouths are sealed, but the Federalists are beginning to ask this question, why should Le Vagny's own sons attempt to kill their father's benefactor? And just how clean are Imperial hands? So, intrigue stuff. About, yes, Le Vigny. There we go. <laughs> so, you can see the Elite Dangerous Unit hasn't really changed much in that, in that sense. Um, uh, so, is there anything going on here? Um, not really. Uh, Universal Scientist is now talking about the Thargoids a bit more. Okay, so there's a bit more information about the Thargoids. And this is where some of that law stuff comes from, okay? So investigations into the interiors of relatively few motherships captured intact reveal an ammonium, interesting enough, not um, ammonia here, but an ammonium. Um, I'm not sure what ammonium is. <laughs> I think they mean ammonia. Um, ammonium, <laughs> I'm pretty sure ammonium isn't a, isn't a thing. Um, Ammonia-based atmosphere held at a slightly higher pressure and lower temperature than is tolerable to most humanoids. 
Interesting that, some, interesting that it says most humanoids. Um, you know, an ammonium atmosphere, regardless of what it is, is not tolerable to any human at all. <laughs> so what, was, what does it mean to most humanoids? So, you know, there's little ambiguities like that in the law, which which actually probably just areas. Ammonium is a thing, is it? What, what's ammonium then? Um, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me in the chat what ammonium is. Um, I would have thought it was ammonia. So what's ammonium? Is it, is it, is it a, what is it? Um, body parts are carbon based, but contain traces, of several previously unnamed elements. Um, so there's a lot of sort of sciencey stuff in here as well. Oxidation reduction based, but an equivalent to the Krebs cycle has not been demonstrated. Um, hive activity drones and so on and so forth. Um, okay, so it's a salt. It's a, it's an ion of ammonia, so it's a salt of ammonia. Okay, but that doesn't really make sense here, does it? An ammonium-based atmosphere. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you tell me. Does it does it make sense? Ammonium atmosphere, or is it just a typo? Um, so anyway, so <laughs> weird stuff. Anyway, so some stuff is happening. So you know, the, the universe. There's basically basically it's telling you here that there's there's politics going on. Um, for the time being, and the universal scientists are investigating Thargoids. I wonder why that could be. Um, so anyway, let's get, um, what do we buy here? Welcome. welcome. You yes, it's always good to be welcome. All right, major exports, I think major exports here were slaves, weren't they, from what I recall. Um, no, major imports are, s oh, major imports are slaves, so we can't get that from here. Major exports are medicines, though. Does that work back in that tunnel? Uh, or is it computers we bought here? I can't remember. Major exports, medicines and chaff. No, not really. No, minor imports of computers here. So medicine. Maybe this isn't where we went. An ionized ammonia atmosphere. I don't know. That's that's kind of weird. Um, <laughs> I have to go and do some. I have to go and do some GCSE chemistry. I can't remember now. It's way too long ago. And I did O level, so that's even longer and longer ago. Um, so I haven't got an obvious trade route here. That's a bit annoying. Um, where do we get slaves from before? Was it was it Vaquess? Might have been Vaquess. Let's have a look over there. Okay, so major. Exports are slaves. Okay, so that must have been and computers. Interesting enough. So mere major imports of animal meat and fruit and veg, none of which are very profitable. Liquor is quite good. So let's take some liquor over there, uh, and then we can go back and just wait for the time to pass because we're in June now, so that's good. Um, stock market liquor. Come in. We've had a really bad day. <laughs> this guy is always very depressed, I find. We did a lot of missions. We did do lots of missions before, didn't we? Yes. Well, there we got a cargo hold full of um, liquor, which which is which is never a bad thing, I don't find. Uh, so we we don't hang around in in for Casey or whatever it's called. Um, let's go across to the other place and get some slaves. So all this stuff helps us pass a little bit of time while we're waiting for the next missions to to present themselves. Now oh, it's the third of June. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, hang on, not that view. Right, so there's a space station around Planet One, Dickens Base. Yes, we've been there before. Um, mm, 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 mm. Biggs is hollow. So anyway, so yeah, so that, some of that law about the Thargoids does derive from this game. So you know the fact that they're ammonia or ammonium, we're not quite sure. Based life form, uh, you know, breather, higher pressure, lower temperatures. Um, you know, all that sort of comes from this game. We learn a bit more about what they're actually like. 
Now it's interesting. The other thing, this um, this this is a topic obviously on the Elite Dangerous forums at the moment, and I've I did a bit of a tongue-in-cheek YouTube video the other day comparing the um, the, the taxi service time to um, this is an Spectrum entire loading experience. Um, but notice in this game the amount of uh, other than when you're attacked, obviously, which you know takes a bit of time to deal with, the amount of time you spend in space in this game and, and Frontier Elite 2, and even really in some cases the original Elite, um, is um, is far lower than you do spend in Super Cruise in Elite Dangerous generally. This game does give, I still think it does give you quite a good sense of the scale of things, but um, you do get to your destination a lot quicker in terms of gameplay time. Um, so Hello, if you've got anything we can eat, you'll make yourself very popular. Well, I've got 84 tons of the best liquor. <laughs> Will that do? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know, maybe. Um, let's get rid of the radioactives. Got to be careful of the radioactives. Um, okay, so uh, we want slaves here, didn't we? Now I need to have cargo bay life support. I mustn't get that wrong. Um, shipyard. Welcome to the Imperial Shipyards. Our servants are yours, everything is fully guaranteed. Excellent. The funny thing is, these guys follow you around. <laughs> or is it different space stations? Um, so, um, isn't that the station that broke my... I think it might be, yes. It might, it might be the station. Um, right, where is... Good, can't... we'd hope you'd call in. We have a load more ships on offer. Take a look around. I don't need a ship. What I want is a, a tractor beam cargo scoop. I wonder what that does. Where is the... Where's the Congo Bay life support? There it is. Fit. Boom. Um, we need that because otherwise our slaves will turn to fertilizer, as we've found out in the past. So let's buy all the slaves we can. Cannot afford slaves. Oh, they're expensive. Um, okay. Let's get, let's take our slaves back to Akinar. We'll dump the radioactive fuel before we get. That. <laughs> The space station. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> we, des we desperately need food to eat. Literally, it has 1,858 tons of food <laughs> in stock. Uh, it's quite funny, isn't it? Um, <laughs> um, but there's far more variety than in the EDO bar. Sleepy Pete has clones. <laughs> Sleepy Pete is excellent. Um, <laughs> these screws are really funny. That's one of my favourite. Things, but he's always asleep. He's, <laughs> surely he's got to move up, um, and that's that is that is the thing I think for Elite Dangerous Odyssey is that you know are the NPCs going to be much more diverse? Cause, I mean the the NPC generator thing, the Hollow Me thing, is um, capable of presumably virtually boundless um, creations of characters, but they all seem to be um, the ones we've seen so far in the alpha seem to be quite prescribed. Um, and they're always the same ones wherever you go, which which obviously isn't quite right unless they are clones. <laughs> Which is a bit strange because they're not supposed to be in the Elite Dangerous Universe. Um, so there are little little things like that which are kind of kind of yeah, needs fixing. Um, anyway, let's save the game. Let's go to Akinar. What time is it? We're still actually. I need to do some. I'm gonna have to. Do, well, I ought to do some jumping around. I think because um, that's sort of long range because um, we need the time to go past a bit more quickly. Otherwise, we're just not going to get to the the mission. So let's let's go. Let's go up there just because we can. And let's see if we can move time forward a bit, as it were. I suppose I could sit still in a base. Maybe we could do that. Um, it's a bit boring though. Although it's not super interesting hyperspace in between places anyway. Um, yeah, let's get that going. Um, let's just hyperspace over there just because we can. That gets a bit of time. Not very much because we've actually got a quite efficient hyperspace drive, haven't we? So actually we can't go directly there, let's go. Oh, so I hope it's out of range as well. Um, let's go there. Ah, oh, the undercarriage is down again. Let's worry about that. Right, let's go to Akinar. And we can get us in the fuel. New version of Universal Scientist is now available. Okay, so we're getting close. That's June. I suppose we could sit out here in space for a bit. That's the other way to do it. Um, right, let's jettison. We've got plenty of. There we are. Just some those. I suppose we could. Uh, I don't know why, the, why is the hyperspace 
Oh, it wasn't. It wasn't enabled. Right. Let's let's just sit around for a bit then. Um, and let time. It's a very slow way of making time, even at full-time acceleration, is not exactly fast. Um, it's going to be far better if we do jump around. How much fuel have I got on board? Two. So I can make a jump and a jump back. Let's just do that. Let's go over there. Because we want to get to about August, I think, is about when the next mission turns up. So now it's July, so we're getting there. Okay, so let's go remember to dump the radioactives. Which, interesting enough, in this game, they seem to have fixed the bug where the radioactive sometimes smash into your ship. Um, undercarriage, good, good call. Um, so, um, G looks like they're templated. Um, yeah, so Stephen, I'll show what that's what I'm worried about. Everything is the same. Yeah, it is a bit samey. Uh, you know, the um, the outposts particularly were a bit disappointing with the fact they haven't really taken into account zero G. Um, looks like they're templated rather than procedural at the moment. I, I guess that might change. Maybe they switch something on because yeah, that's another thing to, to test. Um, uh, the blue circle accidentally add teleportation to the game. <laughs> yeah, the um, well, yeah. So even the even the SRV kind of gets hoisted up into the ship, doesn't it? Um, it's kind of a shame that all we've got is a fade to black transit. That's that's one of my biggest disappointments, I think, so far. Um, that is a bit disappointing. Right, uh, let's get to. So we haven't got any dodgy cargo on board now, so we should be golden. Uh, there is Capitol. There's Fort Donalds. So th this is what I mean. So Fort Donalds is um, 48 astronomical units away. So okay, there's your realistic scale of the galaxy, okay? 48 astronomical units away. How long does it take us to get there in game time, okay? Um, so I'm going to I'm just going to put a timer on on my on my phone because I haven't got anything sophisticated uh, <laughs> other than my phone. Um, so where's a, where's a clock? Okay, come on, where's my clock? It's on there somewhere. Uh, can't find it. Where, where's the clock? <laughs> just when I need something, it's not there. Um, that's the calculator. Where's my where's my clock gone? Oh, so annoying. Do, 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 do. I can't even find it. It's disappeared. That's really weird. I've lost my clock. Anyway, well, I'll do it on the screen. I'll do it on the screen. Um, all right, so, okay. <laughs> it is now, I'm going to go, it's 14.40, it's 14.11. I, as, I'm going to press press the hyperspace button on, on the, and I'll just sort of see how long it takes us to get to a place, um, which is quite distant. All right, here we go. Four. Three, two, one. Autopilot engaged. Maximum time acceleration, and we're off. Um, okay, so we're counting down across space. So look how. I mean, in game time, it's taking us hours, obviously, because um, that's that's kind of it. Um, and we're not being attacked here. But again, in Elite Dangerous, quite often you're not being attacked either, unless you get interdicted. So now we're down to 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. So we've traveled most of the width of the solar system here. And we are now coming into range of the planet. And we will be docking in just a moment. There we go. Right, we're at the docking. OK, that was 48 seconds. <laughs> 48 seconds, okay, to cross, cross space in game play time. Now, um, I, I only offer that as a comparison, um, not that either game is right or wrong, um, but it's, it certainly wasn't 15 minutes, was it? <laughs> I've always felt, I personally, I, I, yeah, I don't make it use. I, I've got no problem with the immensity of space because I understand the immensity of space, but yeah, the frame shift drive is, 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 is a hand wavium device. It doesn't need to operate at any particular speed. Um, so um, it, it does does seem to take a long time to get anywhere, the FSD, to me, um, compared Welcome, to Commander. some of the other the games. The servants of the Empire are yours. 
Too easy, says uh, Castle. Yeah, well, maybe it is, you see, but if, if you get a whole bunch of pirates after you, as we have seen in previous games, um, it can take you hours to get to the space station if you get there at all. Um, so, um, and I think the trick is if you're going to have a long duration piece of space travel, um, you've, got, you've got to bear in mind it is still a game and you know, maybe there needs to be stuff that happens. I don't, I don't know. It, I don't quite think the balance is right, I suppose, is my, is my point. Um, right, let's sell these slaves. Actually, let's check the bulletin board in case there's a good cash deal on slaves. Um, Welcome to the Imperial Station Link. Wanted slave. Look at that. 2,322 per ton. That's the sort of deal we like to see. We've only got 64 tons of slaves. <laughs> cash a Rudy. Ka ching. <laughs> Um, Sophia says the topic will disappear as soon as no one needs to use Apex. I think you're probably right. It is the it's yeah you know, when you're I suppose when you're flying your ship at least you feel like you're doing something even though you're not really doing anything. Particularly if you've got super cruise assist on, then um, um, but you are I suppose in charge well, of your ship, aren't you? So you, know, it, it, you feel like you're doing All something. Um, to ensure legitimacy. <laughs> that's very 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 passive aggressive. Um, and uh, you know, I, I certainly don't intend to use Apex for anything. I don't think I can't think of a use case where I would use it um, over having my own ship because I can land anywhere on my own ship, which is much more preferable. Particularly if I'm, yeah, <laughs> it gets slightly funny with the Apex thing. If you're trying to sneak into a base, <laughs> in fact, if you're trying to sneak into any kind of military kind of any anything top secret um, anywhere on the earth for any reason. Um, you know, taking a taxi there isn't exactly the stealthiest way to do it, is it? <laughs> I think if I was running some kind of clandestine base, I would just shoot the taxis down just as a matter of course, because <laughs> why not? <laughs> uh, right now, it's the 10th of June. Let's just check out the newspaper in case anything wacky is going on. Um, because a new issue. Right. OK, uh, so. Imperial Communications Director denies Thargoid sightings. His Excellency the Defender of the Truth. Da, 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 da. Okay. All Imperial citizens are officially awarded to avoid scaremongering and quash any further rumours of the aliens' continued existence. OK, so there aren't any Thargoids. You're perfectly safe. <laughs> um, OK, so th um, Thargoid motherships and Thargoids in the region of a surge. Interesting. Um, the Thargoids no longer exist, and should any similar threat manifest itself, we are in the best possible position to defeat them. Uh, citizens of all Imperial systems can rest assured that the Imperial Guard, um, um, everything's fine. <laughs> There's no story here at all. OK, so that's interesting. What does, what does the Fed say? Um, OK, so the Feds aren't talking about that. They're talking about something else. Not sure what's going on with that, that stuff. Universal scientists is still talking about the Thargoids. Um, so um, interspecies. So this is interesting. The Empire is actually completely denying the existence of the Thargoids, while this other one's basically <laughs> giving you lots of information about the Thargoids. Um, Thargoid culture appears similar basis to hive cultures found in most insect species across the galaxy. Again, interesting enough there, insect species across the galaxy, implying that there are multiple life forms in, in this version of Elite Dangerous as well. Um, uh, yes, <laughs> like taking a taxi to a bank robbery. I mean, <laughs> you can just drop me off here. The thing that really annoys me is, is for a taxi, I want to be able to turn around to the Apex taxi and say, can you just wait on the pad for five minutes? I'll be back. That's what I want to be able to do. It's like the moment you disembark the ship, I'm out of here. It's like, it's like a taxi driver just brings the clutch up and just wheel spins away, leaving you there standing, not at all suspiciously. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a, that's a bit weird. So, um, so anyway, there's been small amounts of um, uh, communication with the Thargoids. Um, if this is the case, drones are effectively active arms of the hive rather than individuals. So, okay, so there's this hive mentality. Um, Thargoid human interactions next in um, Universal Scientist. Now, this this of course is rather historic from our perspective because we 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 know all this from Elite Dangerous, but. This was the first time this stuff had ever been put into kind of law um, in 1995. So, you know, you're learning, you know, oh, this is actually, this was actually really exciting for elite players at the time because this is, this is basically, this is the truth about the Thargoids. We're actually getting the skinny on the Thargoids properly for the first time. So this was, this was quite a big deal back then. Uh, Frontier News. Um, 
so there's there's stuff going on running metals um yeah, various other bits and pieces so you know so that's um you know stuff is happening and then the random intergalactic gossip is just uh, <laughs> just just great great um so there's a very strange hap stuff happening in the elite dangerous universe um laser light and neutron rock and vibe vibe vibes and you know where it's at is like happening man us <laughs> rip pop rock and stop shake it to utterly cosmic for words pictures sounds media total media we did mention the media media overlay with more <laughs> sex cerebral stimulation it's a gas gas <laughs> what all this stuff's supposed to be sounds like sounds like somebody has completely lost them <laughs> This announcement void where prohibited by <laughs> only 59 credits, 89 with drug sex option guaranteed. What? <laughs> I've got no idea what that was all about. <laughs> now this is here's, here's a bit of here's a bit of history as well. Okay, so this was a previous one we didn't read. It's a little over a hundred years since the last Thargoid mothership was vaporized by the fighting lasers of intergalactic Navy elite commanders. Okay which is a reference back to the original elite that's a seriously long time it was before daniel ten's daughter became the best-selling dream star the galaxy ever seen um how many of us remember the thargoids as they really were how many of you crumblies out there treasure the medals you won battling against the creepy crawlies in the war to end all wars how many of us had had the chance to win lifelong fame um here at random gossip we want to know where they all went what happened to the tendroids <laughs> give me the thargoid um and are they really, as our reporters believe, arming themselves for a return to this part of the universe? If any of you have the answers, mail us on our intergalactic mailbox and we'll publish your responses. So there's sort of what is you know, what's happening here, reading between the lines, as it were, is that the you know, the, the newspapers are sort of the the empire's basically going, No, there aren't any Thargoids. Um, <laughs> random intergalactic gossip, oddly enough, is the one that's going, Oh, what what, what, what happened to the Thargoids? And then um, you know, the universal scientists say, well, we, this is what we know about the Thargoids. And the Federation is just thinking about something else right now. OK, so it's 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 there's there's subtle hints that something's afoot. I think something is afoot. Um, right. So let's do let's do a bit more cash, cash, cashing in. Um, let's buy a little bit of military fuel. Um, and let us do a bit of actually see what we'll do a few jumps let's get that let's get that time up just because we can um because it's now july we need i think it's probably the next issue of the newspaper is the one we want uh launch request so let's just jump about a bit to, to pass the time of day Okay, so that's the 16th of June. There we are. 18th, 19th, 20th of June. Um, I think we need the next issue of the newspaper is the one that we actually want. I, I, from, from recall, anyway. <laughs> some, some hip raunch. I don't know what that was. <laughs> he did some onion head before writing it. So that's, that's some serious. I mean, that's. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, this game was, I don't know what the age group this game was marketed to, but I'm pretty sure it was teenagers. Um, not sure what my parents would have made of some of those kind of comments if I'd been youngish at the time. I was that much older, of course, by this point. But um, Right, so there's a new issue. Right, now it's August. Okay, so I think, I think we're in the right place. So um, let's, let's dump it in the right place. And let's get back to, let's get back to, Akinar, because I've got a feeling we're now in about the right place in time for the next mission to occur. But um, I'm just going to wonder where we need to be, actually, because I've got a feeling it might be position sensitive. Let me just go and have a check up on this, because I am cheating a bit um, with with the missions. <laughs> I'm trying to be in the right place at the right time. Um, um, so it's suggesting we... Um, um, no, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we sh we can be anywhere for this next mission. So uh, let's see if it's available. Um, all right, so uh, capital is where we need to go. Uh, not just capital, sorry. Uh, capital is the planet, isn't it? It's the space station we want. Port Donalds. 
Let's go back there. Because we saw the new issue of the newspaper was out. So let's get over there. Um, aimed at Douglas Adams readers, I think. Yes, most of the people I know who were playing this were 20 years. So maybe 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 20 was okay for some, some for some hip raunch. <laughs> that seems like a very strange thing to do. Ah oh dear, most amusing. I was 16, so I was in the age bracket, says Kelvinator. So, uh, yeah, I hesitate. So in, in 1995, I was 25, so half my, half my current age. <laughs> so let's take this extremely immersive trip across space here to appreciate the full scale of the universe and stuff. Here we go. <laughs> um, so, um, so, yeah, I, um, um, next Thursday I'll do a bit more Elite Dangerous Alpha Odyssey streaming. I'm, I'm just going to concentrate on, on my thoughts on... Because I can't do the... Com I, I have played the combat bit. I haven't... Um, um, my son was chuckling at my attempts to do FPS gameplay. I did manage to win that actually, but I wasn't very good at it. And I wasn't... I, I can sort of say... Ah, oh, rats. Oh, well, oh no. <laughs> I still have one ton of radioactive. I thought I should have seen those. Oh, I must have used it to refuel the ship. That's a bit That's annoying. Up. You are welcome in Imperial space. Other than the fine, yeah. <laughs> I'll pay the fine. There we are. Sorry about that. Right now, let's check out the let's check out the newspapers because I've got a feeling um, it should be showing up. There's a, there's a civil war that starts going on. I think um, now. Okay. Okay. So and there's another attempted assassination of Hengist Duval, fifteenth emperor. Um, however, the abject gratitude for prompt action of Imperial clone troopers. That's a bit weird. We are supremely happy to be able to write this ineffable excellency escape this dastardly attempt with nothing more than a trivial scratch. Okay, so that's that's good. Um, the Emperor survived. What about the Federal Times? Speculation is running rampant throughout the galaxy today as news filtered through of the sudden disappearance of the holy pinnacle of holy pinnacle of Kumbaya. <laughs> It's mountain on beaten the violent acrimonious attacks have broken out between <laughs> two different factions of the cult of Kumbaya. Um, if anybody doesn't <laughs> know what Kumbaya is, um, I don't know. That's a it's a it's um, it's a sort of folk song. I associate it with Sunday school in the UK, which was school that you had to go to on Sundays, which hence the name Sunday school, um, for about an hour while your parents were off going to proper church. Um, so Kumbaya was a song. Um, um, which I think is African in origin. Um, yeah, Clone Troopers does sound a bit familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> I think, and it kind of goes, Kumbaya, my lord, Kumbaya, Kumbaya, my lord, Kumbaya. It goes on like that. It's like in a round. It's a it's, it's very simple tune. Um, and <laughs> But it's a well-known folk song um, called Kumbaya. And but for some strange reason, it's in Elite Dangerous and Elite here as the Church of Kumbaya. <laughs> um, and so and they and they still exist. OK, they still exist in Elite Dangerous as well, which is quite fun. Um, 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 and then there are two different. This is quite fun. There are two different cult factions here. So so David Braidwin was never one to not poke fun at religion, um, known colloquially as the Hairies and the Hairless, each accusing the other of kidnapping a two kilometer high pinnacle and concealing it for purpose of secret worship. How you a steal a two kilometer high pinnacle and how you conceal it? <laughs> I'm not quite entirely sure, but. Um, <laughs> um, uh, what, what's all that about? I've got no idea. Uh, but anyway, that you know, there, there are some very strange religious types in the universe of elite, um, and that's that's one set of them. Uh, random intergalactic gossip. Now, okay, so the nasty shock. She found hubby Rosam in bed with a, with a mains adapter. <laughs> I married a robot, says mother of two. <laughs> Karelia Kapek, 46 standard years, had a nasty shock when she came home unexpectedly from her work as a gene sorter at Helix Industries and she found hubby Rossum in bed with a mains adapter. <laughs> the cheating mechanoid admitted that he had lied to her despite his human appearance. Rossum was actually a robot built over 100 years ago by Wolfstonecraft Industries of Capital. <laughs> so, I never suspected a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I did think it was strange. He seemed to slip into a cobra on our honeymoon and spent the rest of the week huddled up to the shaver socket in the bathroom. Ah, <laughs> uh, dear. 
Human females have an attraction for me that my own kind can never have. <laughs> okay. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. All right, Frontier News. Uh, congratulations, it's an android about the past 10 centuries. So expecting parents have seldom needed to wait until the moment of birth to discover the sex of a child. Modern medical science is... Da -da 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 -da. Um, so now I don't think this is... Happen anything particular has happened yet. Uh, so that's interesting. So... Um, So maybe it's oh, apparently it's late August. We need to be so we need to jump around a bit more. So let's do that. Um, maybe we need the next the next next message. <laughs> it's like reading the sun. Rossum's <laughs> Universal Robots. <laughs> this is some very uh, very strange stuff is occurring here. Uh, right, let's go up. Let's just jump around. Let's get the next newspaper. So I suppose the point is here. Um, it, but it's not a very it's not a very easy trail of missions to follow to be frank um i wouldn't have a clue that a mission was potentially coming up at any stage without the game kind of without without foreknowledge that there's actually something going on um which which, which is a bit of a problem um it's the missions are kind of linked but there are big big gaps in the missions um which don't really help Right, so that this is probably the mission that we want. Right, okay, so let's let's get rid of that cargo, which gets us into trouble every single time, um, and get back to the space station again, because time is tickling on. We haven't got to the mission. It's just me faffing about in space. <laughs> not that you're not used to you, me faffing about in space, but you know, be honest. Right. Uh, 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 uh. Donald's is there. Engage engines, maximum star dreamer. Off we go. Um, <laughs> it's, it's like reading this. Yeah, so the newspapers are a bit. Um, I think you've got to dock to get the update to the newspaper. I think that's how it works. And then every so often you've got to buy a new subscription. But this, the game hasn't crashed on this today. He says very quietly. It's been well. But now we're in September. Okay, so let's. Let's see what happens. Now, I think there's a, we get mentioned, the clue is something about a civil war. That's the clue we're kind of looking for. So let's, um, let's see if we can get to that. There's that strange thump that happens every so often. Dunk. <laughs> like small bits of the ship are falling off. Right, there we go. Clearance granted. We're back again, how is you? Greetings. Greetings. Imperial High Command bids you welcome. Excellent. Pleased about that. Uh, right. Okay, so this is another one. Uh, okay, so nothing really there. Federal time. Sources closed the Imperial Court. Red face awareness work. A spate of burglaries. This is severe in Paris. Okay, so there's still stuff is being pinched. Imperial portrait statues went mysteriously missing. Okay, so that's that's the thing. Uh, random intergalactic gossip. Well, it's that time of the decade again, guys and girls. The guns are out in force, bringing sub-zero temperatures in the treacherous snow fields. Um, <laughs> not sure what that's about. Um, uh, Frontier News. Okay, so this might this might be it. Okay, so in yet another example of federal and imperial hypocrisy, the latest summit meeting is to discuss the wording of the Tilalia Peace Treaty, which is taking place of all places on O'Rourke's colony in X, X -E -O -C. Special scientific interests. Okay, so this is to do with the polar bear thing that was in the other one. Uh, to be invited for weeks hunting is. Uh, Political stuff uh, going on there. So that's Tilalia Peace Treaty. Okay. So there's a peace treaty coming up. Um, I'm still hitting radioactive waste. Am I? Have I got? Oh, no, I'm okay on that one at the moment. Yeah. Um, I was going to say I thought I'd done that one. Uh, Universal Scientist is talking about 
Thargoid Steel. Um, actually, we just missed the other one, wasn't it? A oh, biofield polar bear. Okay, so it's mentioning this exo place. Imperial world recognized throughout the galaxy. Da 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 da. Custom bioengineered species were designed, bred, and released. Okay, so that's been mentioned a few times. Um, interspecies fighting. Da 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 da. More stuff about Thargoids up here. Thargoid human interaction was essentially violent and usually terminal for the greater part of the Thargoid era. There is evidence, however, that aliens made several attempts at communication in the early years of the war. Okay, a number of experienced commanders claim to have been surrounded by Thargoids who failed to fire back even while losing a large number of Thargoids to the human lasers. Um, Thargoid mother ships then. I believe at the time as the humans were witnessing either a living sacrifice or Thargoid equivalent to court martial. Okay, interesting. Um, so anyway, Universal Scientist is still speculating. Thing. Now let's just check out the bulletin board and see if anything's going on. Welcome to the Imperial Link. Feel free to choose any Rig subscription offer. 50,000, wow. Wanted medicines, bought and sold, nerve gas. Save our species, play your part in the glory of the empire. Doesn't seem to be a mission here. For the next mission. Hmm. Let's just have a look. Oh no, okay. I'm being warned at the text here. I have a little bird that's telling me this. This is the mission. Uh, it's not very obvious. Uh, friends of the Valhalla Democratic Peace Party wish to arrange for a prolonged holiday for a friend from Valhalla. 50,000 paid to the right commander. So let's check that mission again. Okay, so this is it. Um, right, greetings, we want a friend in the Tahilia system. There's the, there's the clue, okay. Um, so actually, it's not very obvious, isn't it? Because the, this, this is the, this is actually the, the primer for that um, mission. Um, okay, there's the civil war thing about the Tilalia peace treaty. There's no mention of Valhalla in here. There is some stuff about this Exocean polar bear. That's mentioned a few times, but the mission refers to Friends of the Valhallian Democratic the Peace Party command. from Valhalla. But we when you click into the mission, it says, greetings, we want a friend in the Tililia system killed. Okay, so that sounds to me like the game was, um, again, they, they got some of the text wrong. Really hard to know that that mission is there unless you know what's coming up. So, um, okay, so who is it that needs a holiday so badly? So this is the right mission. Okay, this is the right mission. Who is it that um, needs a holiday so badly? Okay, so Dentara Rast, leader of the Valhallian Liberation Army. Who are they? Why so much money? Uh, this will be a particularly dangerous mission. Oh dear. <laughs> you will need the best. You will need to be well armed. Okay, how do I find Rast? Rast will be leaving the starport at, at Lowing... I can't even read that. What's that say? Lowing on the planet Valhalla in the system of coordinates. Okay. Um, where must I carry out? Rast will be well protected. Um, I want more money. Uh, well, um, okay, I'll take the mission. Well, I mean, we'll take the mission because we're going to take the mission, right? Um, what happens? What happens? Can we, can we ask for more money? You have to be joking. This is more than you'll ever get from anywhere else. Well, that's probably true actually so um okay i'll take the mission right good the credit will be transferred to your account when you return so we presume we've got to come back here to the empire okay well, so we've now got a mission kill dentara rast leader of the valhallian liberation army at lowing oh lowing's a place on valhalla in Tilalia, um on uh, the 3rd of december okay the tiger trader bt730 it's very very precise okay um, I should save, yes, you're quite right. So let's save. Let's call this um, Dentara, because it's almost certain. Now this is, okay, so this is, again, this is a mission, and it's almost certainly we're gonna screw this up. <laughs> um, um, the next one is, to, yes, yeah, there, there is a, it is a mission, but it's, this one is better to pass. So um, uh, let's see if we can, think. Actually, I think it branches slightly, doesn't it? That's right. Um, so let's let's see if we can get to anyway we've got to go to the Talalia system where is the Talalia system is a good question 
Uh, Talalia is at minus four, minus one. It's not going to take us long to get there. Minus four, minus one is up here. Minus four. It's quite a long way out, actually. Uh, there's Talalia there. Okay, so it's going to take us a little while to get across there, but not very far. So let's let's head in that. Where are we? <laughs> uh, we're at, we're down here, aren't we? Uh, no, where are we? I'm lost. Let's get back. I've completely forgotten where we are. That's the core system. We're in the Empire, aren't we? There we go. That's where we are. So we've got to go minus four and minus one. So it's sort of north, northeast, northwest rather. I'm going to go with northwest. Right. So let's let's get on the way then. Head over there. But we have to wait until December. <laughs> It's quite a long time. Um, uh, okay, so military fuel, we've got plenty, but let's buy a bit more so we can pass the time of day. In fact, let's buy a, a stack load so we can pass the time of day. Um, and we can hyperspace around just to, it's one of the fastest ways to get time to pass, really. Um, all right, so let's do that. Launch. Um, Semius, that's an infamous system as well. Let's go there. Okay, there's a new issue of Frontier News. So we can catch up on the newspapers as well um, in the intermediate time. There's Tillandia, so we're almost in range already. There we are, in fact, we're there. Let's check out the Tillandia system. Uh, okay, so that's our contract. So there's Valhalla. Which is the first planet? No, second planet, Earth, Earth-type planet, and then there's the base called Lowing. Okay, so that's where we're going to. So let's go. Now we're here. Let's get. It's now the twenty-third of September. So we're, I'm going to jump about a bit and get us. What, what time is the date? Um, specifically at the third of December. So I kind of want to get near the end of November, and then start hanging around close by. So let's try that. Um, just jump down to there. Hyperspacing is the fastest way to pass time in the game. <laughs> Which just seems a bit weird, but since we're not doing anything particularly else, I'm just gonna use it to advance the clock really. Uh, da, 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 da. October. <laughs> Go back again. Yeah. Right, that's the end of October, so probably a couple more jumps now should be good enough. So we're now at the right. So that's that's getting about right, isn't it? So let's save the game here because this might be a really unsafe system, and we might get killed. Uh, there's Valhalla. So let's go to orbit because it's, it's actually from the surface the ship takes off. So we want to go to the space station to kind of hang about without looking too sus of why she'll rumble us. So let's get into. System space. Are we going to get attacked? <laughs> yes, we are. Uh, yeah, switch the engines off. I don't want to go into combat mode. No, I don't want the autopilot on either. How do I switch the engines off? Well, we survived that attack. That was quite a big ship, wasn't it? Uh, and our shield's just about held, actually. So I think I might have just got the shield balance about right there. I'm 
Viking ship is under attack. Mm, no, it's not. What happened there? I want to go there. I need to switch the engines on. That looks like a bit of a bug actually. <laughs> um, let's try that again. Right, same ship is under attack. It's not it's refusing to engage the autopilot oh, is working now. Here we go. Okay, let's see if another ship comes along. Whoa. Yes. What's that effect? Has that ship just appeared on top of us, or what? I didn't even see. <laughs> not sure what happened there. <laughs> oh no, there it is. It's still, it's still about. It's got a, what looks like a rather nasty plasma <laughs> It was a plasma exit. Oh, that was an energy bomb. Ow. Okay, well that killed me. <laughs> not very nice. So presumably these are bad guys now coming after. That was a plasma accelerator, that blue stuff. Okay, that's that's nasty. Um, okay, so we know that... Um, well, I don't know why should, anybody should be after us right now because we haven't done anything yet other than accepting the mission. Maybe that's maybe that's the thing. Um, let's try that again. The last time we picked up a... Because we are under attack. Where's the, where's the ship? <laughs> Combat in this game is very, very, very confusing. I should save it there. Now we've defeated one of the baddies. <laughs> Let's get past that one. All right, onwards we go. All right, now last time we got hit by an energy bomb. Didn't we? That was a bit mean, I think, personally. This is, this is a nasty. Oh. <laughs> Glad I saved the game. Let's try that again. Even with this ship, it's just insta kill. Save after every every <laughs> save. Um, okay, okay. Oh, you don't get a chance to react. <laughs> uh, I'm glad I saved there again. Right. So. By the time you get round to switching the engines off and then thinking about thrusting forward and back, um, you're dead. <laughs> so I've got to switch the engines off, do some basic maneuvers, and the same ship again. Ooh. You can't actually see because of the smoke. It's quite to see, gotcha, get a rotter. Right, is there another ship out there? Is that just debris? I think that's just debris. Good, right, got that one. <laughs> Definitely chucking some quite tough baddies at me. Okay. Where's the ship? That's just debris. I think. That's a small boat. It's just whatever that is, it's it's pursuing me. Let's just go and have a look. Is there something there? There's a yeah, there is. 
What is that? Have I got a radar thingy on board? Uh, I don't know how to activate it if I do. Oh, there it is. It's an Osprey attack. Oh, there we go. Right, so let's turn the engines off. Let it come in. Maybe I can fire a missile at it. Probably not a good idea. I could just energy bomb it, I suppose, but let's see if we can get closer to it so we can actually shoot it. Because it's doing a good job of running away. <laughs> people guess this game is brave and safe. You remember what people loved about the first two games? Getting killed almost straight away. It's just running away. Oh, use the auto part to actually get us into range. Save that again. See if we can actually get into this system, which is a more of a challenge. Uh, 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 Goldstein High. It's annoying that it can't remember your hyperspace. How many pirates are there? We've shot <coughs> three or four ships now, haven't we? No, we've done another one at least. Here's another annoying thing. In order to get to the thing that switches your engine off, it automatically puts you in combat mode, which is the previous menu. Um, and it's so difficult. Oh, two ships. Three ships, actually. Those laser sounds are just horrible. He just ran me. It's nowhere near as fun as the previous game. Just can't work. Because you can't see anything because of the wretched smoke. easier when they're firing actually because at least you can see where they are. Um, right, is there another ship out there? Or is that just debris? I think I got them all. Alright, here we go. Nope, nope, there is another one. Not anymore. on the scanner. Have we got past it? You're going to regret dealing with Liz Mansfield. Oh, there's another pirate there. Okay, so obviously picking up the mission in the first place is a problem in terms of what and what's happening. Turn on the labels. Ah, uh, good plan. There's the ship there. Okay, that kind of does help a bit. Thrust towards her, coming into range. <laughs> Boom. Well, no, I'm not going to regret. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the game is giving me at least a bit of, it's trying to give me a bit of context, which I suppose is a, is a plus point. You know, it's, it's up the stakes because we're trying to, this is a tough mission because you're dealing with something tough. Which sort of, let's do those labels off again for the moment. Have we made it through the pirate yet? Nope, there's another one. <laughs> okay, so it is a tough mission. Labels back on, where's that ship? There it is. See if we can get in range. Here it comes. Boom. Oh, look, 
actually put some stuff up for you as well. Right, so we're make, we're getting we're, we're we're slowly making progress. <laughs> Very slowly, I think. <laughs> it's all that tasty cargo. <laughs> That's right. You're going to regret dealing with that. <laughs> no, I'm not. You forget, I'm a celestial warrior. They've they've clearly forgotten in the last. Yeah, yeah I think we might have got through the pirates. <laughs> <laughs> we are at the best one percent of all bud souls in the galaxy. <laughs> so it looks like we've managed to cut through the whoever it was from Liz. Was it Liz? I didn't even remember who gave us the mission. I didn't check. Uh, presumably it was Liz. Um, oh, we're here. We've made it. Ha ha. We're at the base. Excellent. Right. So let's save there. Um, <laughs> now, um, okay. So I've got a few minutes. Can we do this before I run out of time? Um, okay, so killed Dentara Rast, leader of the Valhallian Liberation Army. Actually, I've just realised I've got fine. No, actually, it's okay to do that. Okay, let's get rid of the um, radioactives then, just because. Okay, right, so we've got our weapons. Wait, we need to get Dentara Rast uh, on lowing on Valhalla and Talalia. Uh, we're in the right place. We've got a few days to go, so okay, let's just forward time a bit then. Okay, so it's about it's a few days, isn't it? Boom, something just blew up again. <laughs> Must save, oh yes, saving. Saving is a thing. Fortunately, you can save in space, which of course is quite good. Um, it's going to take me a little while to do this, guys, so apologies for the exciting gameplay here. Um, uh, <laughs> we simply fast forward time. I suppose I could sit outside. That's probably okay up here, thinking about it. Um, let's do that. Okay, launch request. Otherwise, we're just going to get charged, aren't we? Um, you don't want to be too close to the base where the ship spawns from, otherwise, you spook them. So that, that's the thing. But we could probably go outside of the space for a bit. Um, let's set the engines to zero speed. Um, we don't want the hyperspace, but we do want this time to kind of... All right, so keep on, it's now the 15th of November. Oh, look, that's quite good. I can actually see the planet rolling by, which is a bit sickening. <laughs> but it's quite amusing. Woo! We'll go around in orbit. <laughs> it's OK, we don't watch FE3, FE for the gameplay. <laughs> that's a bit kind of disorientating, isn't it? The planet. That's like, um, what's that place in Elite Dangerous which goes around really quick? Um, at least this is sort of semi. Sh ship is under attack? What? What do you mean ship is under attack? Oh, well, it is as well. What's going on? You can't. <laughs> what? 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 I was next to the space station. <laughs> what? What's all that about? Oh. I'm going to stay really close to the space station then. Maybe that's why I was too far away. <laughs> Meet around hollow. I was long. Okay, let's, not, let's try this again. Oh dear. This game does not really want me to show it off, does it? Right, I'm going to really close to the space station, okay? So we're not far from the space station. We should still be, I would argue, in, in a safish zone here. <laughs> it's speed up time and the space station goes completely loophole, loopy. <laughs> the, that's what's making the buzzsaw noise, okay. <laughs> now, the way some of the stars are flickering on and off as well, you know, we're spending so much time in space that stars are being born and stars are dying. <laughs> now, will we get attacked? We shouldn't get attacked near the space station. That's just, that's just not right. <laughs> that does look a bit disorientating, doesn't it? <laughs> With the planets. Look, I'm under attack. What? You can't attack me near the space station. What are you talking about? This is very odd. I've never been attacked next to a space station before. Oh, it's not letting me f Oh, there was a ship as well. But if I shoot on that near the space station, surely the game is going to take exception to me, isn't it? 
I've got the wrong view on, that's why I can't see anything. <laughs> You're not allowed to shoot at me here. Where are you? Are they? See, look, yeah. I get, I get a warning, and then loads of loads of police are going to come out. <laughs> so that's not very fair, is it? And we don't, well, the police are used to us, so <laughs> we get an impromptu round of Elise fireworks. <laughs> oh, they're actually hitting me! Oh my god! The police are actually hitting me! That's not allowed either. Some of them have actually gone out of the docking bay. That's just outrageous. That's not allowed. God. It's all gone wrong! No, this, this hasn't gone to plan at all. The shields are working. It's, it's sort of police fireworks. Oh, it's actually, they've actually they've actually managed to damage my ship. So the police. Police rave. <laughs> oh dear. Not sure I can cope with any more of this today. Um, <laughs> Commander Wager died again. Um, I tell you what, my friends. I tell you what, we will we will resume next week <laughs> and see if we can kill the entire rest. Um, Yes, it was a good thing. I said, yeah, so some, 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 some weird. Stuff. You know, we've learned a few things today. The, the police can now fly a bit, which is a, which is an improvement. Um, you can uh, you can be attacked outside the space station, but if you fire back, it's a crime. Um, so there's a bug, <laughs> and the mission wasn't very obvious. But there we go. <laughs> Quite a good finale, I think. <laughs> anyway, my friends, we will we will call it a day. We will go and try and kill Dentaro Rest next week. Um, and uh, and see how we get on with that. At least we've got the mission. You know, we can put ourselves in a position to hopefully go and fulfil it. So, good stuff. But anyway, you have a lovely weekend, my friends. <laughs> and I will see you on Monday for some sci-fi shenanigans and usual stuff. And probably some chuckling at Elite Dangerous Odyssey on, on Thursday. But um, have yourselves a fantastic weekend, my friends. Be good. And I will see you soon. <laughs> I'm just going to go and have a lie down now. <laughs> Take care, my friends. Be good. See you soon. Bye-bye now.